So the first module um, is about the role that signal processing plays in brain-computer interfaces. And so, as I said in the last lecture, brain-computer interfaces touches on a lot of theory. So there's signal processing, there's a, a role for machine learning, there's statistics and so on. And you can understand a brain-computer interface from the angle of any of these theories if you want to. You can say, well, that's a control system, the whole BCI. Or you can say, that's a statistical mapping. Or you can say, that's a signal processing system, period. And so all of that is applicable, although none of these theories um, completely describes all parts of a BCI equally well. So the theories have their strengths and their weaknesses, and so you're always uh, cramming that into this theoretical framework if you're trying to force it. And so it's a, a good idea to try to look at the various theories in uh, uh, and, and focus on the things that they are really good at. And perhaps um, say BCI is a, something that's best tackled from, uh, from multiple angles in a sense. And so we'll, we'll start with signal processing. This is not a course on signal processing. So I only talk about the minimal amount of theory that you need to understand what a BCI is. Uh, there's good books on that if you want to refresh your knowledge, Proicus and so on. Um, and uh, so it'll be somewhat condensed and um, only semi-formal. So um, we are, we're primarily concerned with digital signal processing here. We're not talking about anal analog things. Um, BCI is mostly a software story anyway. And so uh, DSP is about uh, systems, which are also known as filters, which transform one signal into another. And there's a special class of systems that are so-called linear time invariant systems which um, cover things like spectral filters and so on, and uh, the optimal design of these spectral filters. And that is one of the best developed areas of signal processing. So this is where it really shines, uh, and which is most of the reason why <laughs> you want to have signal processing in a brain-computer interface. There's also other areas, such as statistical signal processing and things like adaptive filter theory and so on, which are among the rather advanced areas of signal processing. That includes things like the Kalman filter, which is well known, and recursively squares estimation and various kinds of adaptive estimation. And so that goes a long way towards efficient design of, um, of certain kinds of uh, solutions in, that are useful in brain-computer interfaces. And there's a rather new topic that's sparse signal processing, um, such as that includes things like compressive sensing and sparse recovery, which is a rather new topic in signal processing, last 10 years or so. Uh, and it does have applications in BCI. It's one of the most sophisticated, you could say, things um, that you can do. And we'll, we'll touch on that in one of the later lectures. So there's, there's several sub-branches and concerns and so on, and there's overlap with machine learning. Uh, and statistics and so on, as you, as you see. And we'll start pretty much with the basics now. And so we'll say, you can view a signal like this uh, x of n here um, as a mapping from an index set, um, such as integers or discrete time, onto vectors, that's the samples. Uh, vectors in the case of Moody channel signal, basically. So that's what it is, and that's how we write it. And from from the point of view of, of signal processing, a BCI is a system, and it transduces the input signal, say, let's call it XN, um, which could be EEG, into a control signal. That would be the output that goes to the thing that you want to control, for example. And so any such system can be defined by a transformation rule. You say, so you have this inf input form XN, and you have a rule that turns it into a new form YN, and the rule can you know, have some math mathematical form, basically, to, to be able to formalize that. So I'll give you a few examples of that and a few definitions. I just rattled these off. Um, so, but it's useful to know them. So you can say a system is, I'll be quite literal here, a system is called static if the value yn, the output value, at any sample n depends only on the input value xn for that sample. So you're not transferring information across time at all in there. Otherwise, it's called dynamic. Um, a system is called causal if the output yn at a given time n only depends on values 
xm4 m smaller or equal to n. So it does not look into the future in a sense. Otherwise, it's called non-causal. And so if you build a BCI physically, <laughs> obviously it cannot look into the future, so it has to be causal. And then um, a system is called time invariant if yn equals a transformation of xn such that if you shift the time, relabel it in a sense, um, uh, the output is, is the same. Uh, it's basically you know, the shifted output. So uh, the signal is, um, uh, is not, uh, or sorry, the description does not explicitly depend on time. Um, OK, otherwise it's called time variant. And lastly, uh, a system is called linear if, if this equation holds, which means uh, under, multi under scaling and under summation, um, the scales and summations propagate through the transformation rule. So twice the input signal gives you twice the output signal, for example, and the sum of two input signals gives you um, transformed, gives you the transformation of the, of the sum of these input signals. Otherwise, we call it a nonlinear one. So basically, the transformation rule is a linear function of the inputs. And uh, it's quite remarkable how much you can cover with linear systems. So that's already sort of almost the entire story on definitions. It gets uh, a little bit more um, uh, interesting now. So when you now say, let's view a BCI as one of these filters, the whole thing. You would say, well, first and foremost, since you run them in real time, they have to be causal. OK. Um, it basically also means that any of its parts have to be causal. Also, usually they do some kind of a temporal filtering. I'll talk about that. So they do transfer information across time, in a sense. And so they are dynamic. Uh, many of them are time invariant. So y y you know you sh um, relabel time, and, and the output doesn't um, you know isn't affected by that. But there's adaptive BCIs which um, which are not. And also um, some simple BCIs can be linear. Uh, certain kinds of say, um, just for the BCI experts here, linear regression on, on EEG uh, is, is basically linear. Um, and there is one more quirk, and that is usually you don't need the output of a BCI at, say, a kilohertz. Um, you need it maybe at the screen refresh rate to control something. Or maybe you want an output every second or every 10 seconds for a workload estimator. And that's why they're, in a sense, multi-rate systems. And so there's quite a few things that apply to that. Uh, and if you, you would need multi-rate signal processing to, to describe a whole BCI. Um, but if you're talking about the components of a BCI, these are perhaps even more conveniently described as filters. And that's actually quite um, easy to understand. You say a, a BCI might be a sequence of, of systems, like a uh, bandpass filter. I'd say a few things about that which suppresses some frequency components. And then you have another stage, which is, say, a linear mapping, which gives you the control signal or so. And so it's easy to partition it into things which are very well described by signal processing blocks. And so that partitioning gives rise to um, certain kinds of, um, of filters that play a role in BCIs that are prompted by these original definitions.